Hey, good afternoon. I'm a little later posting the podcast today with good reason. My wife actually had a surgery today and uh, um, just wanted to make sure I was around for that and uh, feared while I'm driving off to get some prescription fills and filled, I might go ahead and just uh, share a few thoughts that I had today while I was thinking through uh, what she was going through. And I uh, just kind of, um, you know, wasn't a major surgery, a life-threatening surgery or anything. It was actually gallbladder surgery. Not a small thing, but thankfully not typically something you would necessarily be concerned and worried about. Um, but, uh, uh, you know, it's kind of thing that ultimately often, you know, goes without a hitch or anything like that. And today was like that, thankfully. Praise the Lord. Uh, she came through it fine and she's resting now. And um, But there's a passage that came to mind in James uh, in relation to that. And I just thought I'd share a few thoughts on it devotionally today. James writes in chapter 4, verse 13 on, he says, Come now, you who say today or tomorrow, we'll go into such and such a town and spend a year there and trade and make a profit, and yet uh, and yet you do not know what tomorrow will bring. What is your life? For you are a mist that appears for a little time and then vanishes. Instead, you ought to say, if the Lord wills, we will live and do this or that. And so the idea of sort of banking on tomorrow being there, uh, last night, as uh, we were uh, kind of talking about the surgery that was coming up today, and then, of course, today as she um, got uh, prepared to go, we prayed and we talked, and and uh, sort of tongue-in-cheek, but, you know, I guess, you know, there was something to it. You know, we talked about how we loved each other and, and all these kinds of things, you know, as if... Uh, you know, as if, uh, you know, if we don't have a chance to say it again, we wanted to make sure it was said because, you know, you just never really know uh, what a day is going to bring. And, and while on the one hand, we didn't have any real concern that the surgery was going to go well and all that, um, not that there's no chance, but typically a gallbladder surgery is a very common one that, um, that people, you know, that's performed all the time. But nonetheless, it does kind of bring to mind the fact that, you know, life is uh, a bit of a vapor, like James says, it's a mist, you know. Solomon uh, talks about how, you know, so many things in life are vain, and at the end of it all, he ultimately uh, summarizes his experiences by talking about the chief end being uh, to know God, to follow his commands and such, you know, that that which matters most focuses on that which is eternal, and that's our relationship with God. And, you know, when we think about relationships, whether it be our relationship with God or or that which is really, I think, in some respects, intended to be an echo of that, and that's our relationship with those we love. Um, you know, we, we, you know, in moments like this where, you know, again, I, I don't mean to oversell like we were really afraid she wasn't going to make it through or something. Um, but, you know, there's a poignancy to, to moments here where we realize that, hey, you know, I'm going to be out for a bit, and, 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 and you just never know if maybe this is going to be the end. And, um, you know, how frequently we kind of think about life as being a constant. There's always going to be another tomorrow, and and uh, we'll always be able to fulfill our plans that are coming down the road and those kinds of things. We never, uh, I shouldn't say we never, but oftentimes we don't really think about the fact that uh, there's a real possibility that, you know, there, you know, uh, tomorrow may not come for some, or, you know, a relationship could be cut short. You know, it's, it's life is uncertain that way. We never know how long um, it goes on. You know, I can't remember if this was actually in Homer's Iliad or not, but there was uh, a time there where Achilles speaks of how the gods, uh, the Greek gods in the pantheon there, they, uh, they envy human beings because life for us is fragile and so therefore every moment in life matters. It's pregnant with meaning. And I forget exactly how that was put, but you know, there is, uh, there's a wisdom in that concept that every moment becomes more precious when we realize that life truly can pass in just a moment. It's fleeting. There's no guarantee of a tomorrow. And so rather than thinking about tomorrow in common terms like, it's, uh, like we always expect there to be a tomorrow, uh, there is some value in recognizing the meaning of the day, of the moment, especially when we're committing it to the Lord. You know, when we, uh, even as James says, we should rather say, if the Lord wills, we'll live and do such and such. Um, there's something beautiful about the fragility of life and how important every moment becomes in that context. But there's also something beautiful about knowing that as a believer, my life is entirely in his hands. And so whether my life extends for many years to come or whether there's a, uh, 
time very soon coming when I'll see him. There's a confidence in knowing my end, and therefore it allows me a freedom in the moment. Freedom to love him, to love my wife, to love my family, to spend time with my friends and such, and, uh, and really just to appreciate those with a real depth, uh, because those things truly are a gift from the Lord. And when we realize uh, how fragile life can be, uh, it causes us to be consumed with those things that matter most. And it's interesting to me that uh, you know, when we think about the things that matter most, they tend to often revolve around relationships, don't they? You know, the thing that matters most is not the car in the driveway or something like that. I think it was Lee Iacocca said, you know, no one on their deathbed ever says, I wish I'd spent more time at the office. There's, again, something to that. And I wonder if it Christian, as Christians, we maybe have the best opportunity of all to appreciate the truths behind those concepts and certainly to appreciate the truths in this regard as Scripture uh, periodically lets us know them or states them. As a matter of fact, I'm, and I apologize, I know I'm a little bit rambling here, but I just had a bunch of thoughts on my mind in regard to uh, in regard to the day and, and, and what was going on in our lives and that kind of a thing. And I just thought, you know, Maybe I'll just share a few thoughts on this, and I'll share this final thought in kind of closing. Um, David, in his elder years, close to death, uh, blesses his son Solomon. And among the things that he uh, says to his son, the most important of which, in my mind, is when David tells Solomon to know the God of his father. To know God like David knew God. I can't think of a more beautiful wish to bestow upon those we love, especially our kids. And I think that in that concept, in that idea of knowing God, every moment that's given to us is a moment that we can pour into that pursuit. Every moment attached uh, with that pursuit at the heart of it becomes all the more meaningful and all the more sacred and special. And so, um, again, I, I know I'm kind of rambling a little bit here today, and I probably could have just waited till tomorrow to post another podcast. So uh, I hope you'll just maybe appreciate a little bit about what I'm talking about here and take a moment to think through just how beautiful and precious every moment that God gives us really is. And the relationships that he puts in our lives to make them even more so is something really beautiful. And so... Um, you know, as we take uh, hold of each day and, and look at it as an opportunity to know him better, we just praise the Lord for that beautiful privilege and opportunity. So God bless you. Father, help us to see each moment as a gift. Father, help us to never assume that tomorrow is there because it's truly not promised to any of us. And with that knowledge, with that understanding, and even as believers with the expectation that one day we'll see you face to face, Father, help us to see each moment here as precious, something to be handed over to you and uh, an opportunity, so sort of a gift for you to infuse with the meaning that you desire for it to have. And we thank you, Lord, for giving us life to enjoy. And Father, help us to just always keep you at the middle of it. Because only when we do that do we find that life takes on the fullest of all possible meaning. So thank you, Lord. We bless you and praise you in Jesus' name.